beginnings of another vlog. I've been told I need to read The Dragon Republic. So that will happen in this vlog, or of Quang. Um, we have a date and I'm not sure if I'm excited. We'll see how that goes. But also in this vlog, <laughs> Wicked King by Holly Black. I'm gonna struggle with this. I did not like Cardin in The Cool Prince. I liked Jude a lot, but uh, I have, I know people love it, but I do not have high hopes for this. I'm sorry. And the third and final book in this vlog, I am excited for. Monkey Beach by Eden Robinson. I almost said Erin there, that's why I paused. But uh, this was on my Indigenous Cities reading list and I am excited. There's also a movie to watch afterwards. Oh my gosh, I'm already ready. There's a bookmark in here. <laughs> that's so fun. This is a good bookmark. They recently redid the bookmarks and they are just thin pieces of paper, but this, this is one of the good ones. Look at me. Where did I find this? I don't know, let's stick that in there. I think out of all these three, I'm gonna start with The Wicked King. That's the one I'm most interested to read right now out of these three. I, yes, I did pick these because they are all blue. Don't judge me. I'm on a color scheme kick right now. But I mostly picked them because I can lay them and all the spines match up. That's mostly it. So we'll start with The Wicked King. I probably will be listening to an audiobook for this one. I'll probably be reading Monkey Beach and Dragon Republic. I haven't decided yet. So let's go. All right, hello. This is an update for The Wicked King. I did the intro to this video so long ago and I don't remember what I said, but I finally started The Wicked King and that's all that matters. I'm almost at chapter 11, so I am almost to page 900 and, no, 900. Who the fuck do I think I am? <laughs> I'm almost to page 96. As you can tell, my brain is not working anymore. It doesn't work. I have been listening to this on my lunch breaks and listening to it when I can at work and I am still confused. I I don't know what it is about this world in Fairyland that Holly Black has created, but it's not my favorite. Like I, I'm in the mood to read this and I'm enjoying it, but I am constantly like the person sitting there with elevator music playing in my head because I don't know what's happening. So just how I feel. This world and me don't vibe together. But I'm enjoying it, but we just don't vibe. So, I don't know. I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna read the next one too and I'm gonna keep going. But it's not ever gonna be one of my favorite series of all times. Even though I found this really cute piece of fan art and I actually saved it. I don't typically save a whole lot of fan art. Maybe one or two pieces here or there. And I saved one of Cardin and Jude. And I was like, oh, because I know it's enemies to lovers and I know they end up together. But also, Cardin is kind of an asshole. I'm still not over what he did in the first book when he almost killed her. So, still salty about that. Maybe that's why I'm not vibing. We'll see what happens. It's not bad so far. Like a lot has happened, but also not that much. And these are also very small books for so much explanation that I feel like they need to give. I don't feel like they're giving enough explanation. Maybe that's why I don't vibe. I feel like they need to be longer. I feel like there needs to be more beef to these. Does that make sense? Like, does, do people understand that? Or am I just weird? Because I feel weird. I feel weird for not liking this as much as I probably should. An update for The Wicked King. Um, I finished it. Oops. I... Hmm. How do I go about talking about this? So. I gave it five stars, I will tell you that. This was better than Cruel Print. This, I didn't even realize was a middle book because it doesn't have middle book syndrome at all. Like, this was fantastic. I love the way this ended. It was like a kick to the shins and a throat punch all at the same time. There was like, holy shit. I very much, there's this weird whimsical thing that ma just makes me laugh that how whimsical this is with such serious thoughts and such serious concepts to be considering there's like a lot to think about but in the side you're just like seeing this whimsical land of magical things that you've always wanted and always dreamt about this for little children and it's just like people murdering each other and just going through such darkness and such turmoil and just in this whimsical place and it is such a weird concept I genuinely think that the second book is worth worth it. If you read the first book and you didn't like it, because I was iffy about it, the second book is so much better. Like, I've never had a middle book that 
turned out so good or a second book that turned out so good. Like genuinely, plot moves forward, stuff happens. It was great, honestly. Ah, oh, there's a reason I gave it five stars. I'm pretty sure I only gave Cruel Prince four stars. And I have the third one, so I'll get to it eventually. Not in this vlog, but I will get to it. Jude is just such a character, such a person. I literally hate every person in this book except... No, I hate everybody. I was going to say except for Jude, but no, I hate everybody. Everybody is mean. Everybody has their flaws. And everybody is like perfectly perfect the way they are like there's a reason you hate everybody and I love that about this book like it's a genuine I love to hate everybody in this book it's so good oh my god not to mention I've been seeing an increase of fan art on Cardin and Jude and their love story in this one kind of goes a little bit further but who the ending that ending oh Cardin is such a dick I don't like him I really really don't like him I hate him I don't like him I find it weird that he has a tail and you forget that he has a tail and then it comes up in like the little spicy bit she threw in there and you're like oh fuck he has a tail <laughs> anywho oh I definitely recommend this this was so worth it because I see people read the cool prints and they're kind of like eh, eh, eh but like I think I got halfway through and then I couldn't put it down and just kept going and going I was literally laying in bed trying to fall asleep last night with it, my earbuds and listening to the audiobook like I'll sleep eventually and I couldn't because it was just like so good I couldn't stop so I finished the first book in this vlog it's taken me literally months but I did it and I'm very excited about that next what do I plan on reading next I think I think I can get my hands on the Dragon Republic audiobook so I'd like to do that one plus this one counts towards my your goal because it's over 600 pages actually and I feel like I'm reading too many happy things where I like I love things that are happening or I love characters I mean like to be fair I hated the characters in this but I still had a fun time and I enjoyed everything I fucking hate the main character from the poppy war so I feel like this is just going to spoil everything and ruin my mood so I want to get it over and done with does that make sense yeah we're just gonna get it finished with this is such a floppy book this is like extra flop. Like this one, this is kind of floppy. This is like, do you see that? That's okay. That's like full flop. This is such a satisfying book. Also, I like this. I don't like blue. I fucking hate blue. But this, this is nice. This is very nice. Yeah. Um, so let's hope I don't hate the main character in this one. I think I will try to physically read it first. And then, if that doesn't work for me, I will audiobook it. Because I did do that with the Poppy Wars. I think I read the first half physically, and then had to audiobook it. So we'll see. I don't have high hopes. But we're here. So I'm on chapter 24. I'm like really good far into this. Really good far. That's a sentence. Um, page 431 is where I'm at. I, think I have like 200 pages left or something. I am listening to the audiobook though because I don't remember anybody's name and the way that I remember who is who is the how the voice is saying their name. Does that make any sense? I remember people by how their voice sounds and their accent so like the way that the narrator is saying their name is how I remember who is who. I don't remember their names at all and that just doesn't make any fucking sense. Like for a example at work I remember people's ID numbers by <laughs> how they sound when they come up and talk to me and I'm like okay this accent is this number that's just uh, just how my brain works so don't ask how that works so the audiobook is genuinely helping so much because that doesn't make any fucking sense when I say this out loud is I don't remember people's names but I remember how she's saying them so like <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it but I I've read a lot of this so let's go over I was very angry at the beginning of this of Rin, I don't like her at all. <laughs> She's a very impulsive, angry main character who does stuff and acts before she thinks, but then regrets it and will think about it the rest of the time. She's still genuinely upset with what she did in the first book the whole fucking time. And I'm like, if you would have just like, and every time she learns something, she just becomes more distraught about it. I'm like, if you're gonna do shit like this, like at least be confident in your actions, right? And I just like, <laughs> I don't like that about her. So she's very difficult to like get through, which is fair, whatever. And then what else? There's all like her friends. I know Kitai, remember his name, but I don't remember 
the dragon guy's sons. I don't remember either of their names. Um, I only remember Katai because I just heard his name. But <laughs> so she's like traveling. They're they're at war right now. They're kind of just laying siege to everything they go to, traveling down the river, blah, blah, blah. Um, there's lots of like military advancements going on and the white people arrived <laughs> and they're painted terribly and I love it. I was, she's like, they all look the same and I'm like, yes, yes. Like the way that she describes them in this, fantastic. <laughs> the missionaries, the way that they're talking, the what they're doing with her, all garbage people and I love it. Um, <laughs> that was like the part of the book I was like, hell yeah i'm down for this this is really fun and they have them like trying to kind of invade but also not really they're like we're just gonna convert everybody like good luck with that just the traveling and stuff was really cool and she got demoted because she can't really call the fire and i just got to the point where her and katai got bonded so lots of shit has happened lots have been going on uh, i love that this book doesn't hold anything back i will say that i this is a weird angle i've just noticed but I love that it doesn't hold anything back and it says everything that's gruesome and it is gross and disgusting and rude and just tells you all the realness of everything that's been going on and I like that about it but I also hate everything. <laughs> I'm like why do you have to do that? Why do you have to show that? But like I appreciate it. Like R.F. Quang is like a great writer, great author fantastic with what she does with words but like really like <laughs> I'm just kind of like did not want to go through this today. I am really hoping to finish this book today and I've read a good chunk of it already so we'll see how this goes but like I'm not really doing anything else while I'm reading this because I have to pay attention because I could like zone out for a second and miss so much while I'm listening to this so I have to stay focused which is being a bit more difficult and this is by all means not a favorite for me, but I am bearing Rin enough that I don't think I'll get rid of this series and I am still happy to continue on because I want to know what happens, but not because I like anything that's happening. <laughs> Does that make sense? I don't like anything that's happening, <laughs> but here we are. So I'm still trying. Hopefully I'll finish it today and then I'll update you how I actually feel. But right now I'm just like, it's too much for me. I was not prepared. It's a little too much. But you know, war is too much. So like, I think it's meant to be disgusting, surprising, and just awful. And I think you're meant to hate it. And I think that's why it's done beautifully. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. You get what I'm saying, right? Gaslight, not gatekeep, but genocide, girl boss. I forget what I said. I forget what Claire said. I'm just so conflicted. I'm like, this is done well, but I hate it. But it's done really well, but I hate it. <laughs> so I'm having an emotional roller co coaster just like Ran is. So it's a good time. I did it. I finished The Dragon Republic. <laughs> and this is officially my first read of 2023. So the fact that I, I rated it five stars was a miracle in and of itself. <laughs> yes, I did give it five stars. I don't remember what I said to you last time, but I think we were talking about Rune and how I call her Rune now. Runin. Rin. Runin or Rin. Okay, let's call Runin because now I'm stuck in that. But she very much just, how do I, what was I saying? I don't know. She was pissing me off. She still kind of pisses me off. The fact that she can now do what she can do with the fire, thanks to Katai, is very, very exciting. The things that they came up with together, they are just such a great team. And what's his face? Oh my gosh. Nikan is definitely not his name. It's not how you pronounce it. It looks like Nikan, but it's not. He, I've, he's been dodgy from the start. Okay, like, let's be real. He's just dodgy. I knew something was gonna happen. I knew that he was an asshole. Like, we all knew it, right? We could see it. So just like, <laughs> predictable on his part, like, dickhead. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Predictable dickhead, you know? Do you get that? So I liked it. I loved it a lot. I loved what happened. I like kind of how the ending happened. They defeated the Empress. And now what's gonna happen? I don't know. What's the next one called? The Burning God. So Runin, like, girl, get your shit together. She is getting her shit together. She finally has figured out how to live with her trauma a little bit and in turn has become less of a annoyance to me. <laughs> like, she knows what she wants now and she's like, okay, I will work towards that. And I appreciate it, okay? Find yourself, girl. Find out what you want. Let's work through it together. Talk to somebody who isn't an evil white person and move on with your life like Jesus Christ ah oh, yeah this was this is a lot this took me a really long time to get through but I am so happy that I did oh my gosh 
Mysperians, the Nakara Empire. Ah, oh, Phelan. Oh my gosh. That was so good. I loved Phelan. I loved what they did with Phelan, basically. I don't, I see, I haven't actually, you know what I should do is when I'm listening to the audio, look and see how things are actually spelt because psych is spelt way different than I thought it was. <laughs> like way different. <laughs> it's spelt C-I-K-E, but it, I would, thought it was like S-Y. CE or something like that. Funky. That's why is what I thought. Anyways. Oh, I love this. It's Nisa. Nisha? Nisha. I think, I don't remember his name. He's an asshole. We know who he is. And I just, I didn't think I was going to give this five stars, but the fact that she can fly through science and her god at the same time, just amazing. And kind of the clever stuff that they've done. And not to mention every time they do something successful in here, it gets be back down into the ground and they basically have to start all over again. And I, I like that part of it. Normally it would annoy me how many times like they're losing, but I think I like it in this one. You feel? So, five stars, that was awesome. Yes, I will be keeping this series, it's my verdict. So, you guys like this? Like, I have very conflicting because like, the first half of the Poppy War, amazing. The second half of the Poppy War pissed me off so bad. Like, I hated it. And this one, it was just mixed feelings all around. Honestly, I felt angry the whole time I was listening to it. So it was kind of like, I was just struggling with my own emotions the whole time I was listening to it. So the fact that we came out with a five star, it's mint. So, anyway, that's how I feel. Moving on, I will be physically reading Monkey Beach here. Eden Robinson. I already have my, it's all ready to go, my bookmarks in there. Oh, this is cute. It is possible to retaliate against an enemy but impossible to retaliate against storms that's so cool this one hopefully is a quick read it is 374 pages and i like the print in this it's like bolded for some weird reason anyways hopefully good things because so far this vlog has just been filled with five star good things and i i truly hope this is a five star good thing as well let's go I am a little over halfway through part one of Monkey Beach. So part, this is part one here and then part two starts. I don't know if there's a part three. I didn't actually look. Might be part three. Yeah, there's three parts. I am about a hundred pages in, I want to say maybe 90 pages in. So I'm like around this much in. And I feel like there's a lot of symbolism in here. And so I'm trying to listen to it or read it critically, I guess, because I am listening to the audiobook. I was gonna physically read it, but I just, my brain isn't in it right now, which is fine. Um, and I'm kind of taking note of the ocean being mentioned, dreams being mentioned, and what was the third thing? Food, like berries and corn and stuff like that. And it's just, so I'm trying to like take note in my brain of that stuff. Um, and paying attention to that stuff because I feel like it's all important and gonna make sense. But right now, right, we're just recounting Lisa's life as like a kid and there's kind of back and forth between her growing up and then a little bit of talk about her brother gone missing, but we don't know if he's missing. He went on a fishing trip, I think, and they live near Monkey Beach, and Monkey Beach apparently is where Sasquatches live, according to a legend. And a lot of the <laughs> indigenous languages being used sounds Hawaiian to me at the moment. It could just be the narrator, it could just be me losing it a little bit, but you know, it just, I'm like, is this Hawaiian? It's not Hawaiian, it's native and indigenous. And she do use the term Indian in here, and then it also takes place in BC, so Canadian. Um, some of the places they were mentioning, I actually know where they are, so I was like, ooh, that's cool at the beginning. But I feel like it's just a lot of symbolism at first, and then we'll get into the bulk of the story. So I'm just anticipating right now, and we'll see where it goes. I finished Monkey Beach. <laughs> I don't even remember. Okay, like, listen, I listened to this thing late at night, and it made me lose my mind, okay? Trigger warnings, um, sexual assault, death ghosts i think should be one anyways this thing is wild okay literally the main character lisa is talking to somebody they're out at a diner and she's talking to somebody and then literally this person goes well what the fuck do you think's happening lisa because i'm dead 
and then disappears. And I'm like, the the ghost aspect of this made me lose my mind. It was so cool and I love how it was adapted. And after that, it was kind of just like, oh, I saw this ghost here, I saw this ghost there. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> what do you mean you saw ghosts? So very much enjoyed that. I did end up giving it four stars. But just because of the first little bit, I was like, I was lost. I didn't know what was going on. Um, but I think this is something worth a reread and I think it's something worth annotating and paying attention to and I did not give it the righteousness it deserved but it was amazing and I definitely recommend it oh, um just like perfection honestly I need to watch the movie so I'm gonna watch the movie and if I get back to you I get back to you but if I don't I read three books in this vlog already so the vlog is over I read, oh my gosh, what did I read? The Dragon Republic, I read The w Wicked King, and I read Monkey Beach. And everything, honestly, I would recommend all three. All three of them. I, yes, was conflicted about The Dragon Republic, but I was never conflicted about The Wicked King, and I was never conflicted about Monkey Beach. Honestly, this is like a 4.5, 4.75. Like, it's almost a five star. Like, if I reread it, it would be a five star because it was just that crazy. I think that if I reread it, I would also catch all the stuff that she's hinting at the whole time before you actually get to it. And I think that's what will make this one amazing and just like an all time favorite if I reread it and I catch everything. Okay? Treat this like a novel study. Okay? Look at it like it is a novel study and you'll get everything out of it that you need and that you want because it's worth it. You're worth it. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching this vlog. I don't have a favorite because they were all amazing so I can't pick a favorite from this vlog. Sorry, can't do it, won't do it. Let me know if you have a favorite though. If you've read any of these, what are your thoughts, feelings, concerns maybe? <laughs> and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!